And we are now live on air with uh, Jake Strickland all the way from Southwest, no, New South Wales, Australia. Is that correct? New South Wales, Australia. New South Wales. G'day, mate. How are you? Yeah, going well. <laughs> G'day. Good, good, good. And of course, it is now 10 o'clock at night for you. Uh, yes. But we also have, uh, I think, a class from Greece that have joined us as well. And, and some of the students will get a chance to ask some questions. We've got some live viewers who are also joining in, watching the live stream on livingmaths.com. So we're going to be chatting about a little bit of everything, actually. A little bit of science, a little bit of making. Uh, wow. um, we do have your daughter, Mickey, who is going to make her stage appearance at some point during Good. the interview. Okay, Good. she's just getting her hair done and, 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 and putting on her lips and stuff. So um, just by way of introduction, you are uh, Mickey's dad and you are a science teacher. How long have you been teaching? I've been teaching for 20, 22 years. 22 years. And yeah. have you been teaching a high school or primary school? So I'm a high school science teacher, but I do a lot of science shows in the junior school. So I'm used to teaching young people as well as old people. And you do teach at your daughter's school, is that correct? That's right. So I've got four children. And uh, two of them have finished school and two of them are still at school and they've all come through the same school. Kids oh, the I didn't know that you've got four. <laughs> got four. Here comes my gorgeous Michaela. Hello, Hello. gorgeous Michaela. Uh, you can see she's had her beauty sleep. It's all paid off. You have nailed it. Well done. Well done. So we were just chatting about your dad being a teacher at your school. Is it cool to have your dad as a teacher at school? Um, no. No. I, I was expecting you to say that. Now, I'll tell you why. Not everyone wants mom or dad at school because then you can't get up to mischief. Otherwise, people look at you and go, oh, I'm telling your dad. Is that why you're saying no? <laughs> oh, she's not allowed to answer. She's pleading the fifth. <laughs> okay, well, who do you want to be your science teacher next year in high school? Not dad. Oh, not dad. And, it's, oh. and you know what? You know, we've noticed it's not because she doesn't think you're a good teacher. It's because I think that there's something about having mom or dad in the classroom watching your every move. And you I can't be a that. clown because I know that uh, <laughs> Michaela's ambitions of being a clown might uh, contradict being in the classroom as well. So <laughs> we, we, we understand where you're coming from. But... The big thing is that you obviously are a science teacher. You yes. are yourself on YouTube. You are creating science experiments and physics experiments, which I think is pretty cool. And you've been doing that for how long? Uh, almost five years now. I've been a YouTuber for almost five years. What I find fascinating is when I teach all my students and I ask them, what do you want to be when you finish school? <laughs> In the old days, it used to be, I want to be a fireman or a doctor or a nurse. Now it's, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be a YouTuber. Yeah. So I've Michaela, been would uploading you every Friday for five years. And Michaela, is that what you want to do? I know that you've got Invent with Mickey, which is just started out now. And hopefully we're going to find ways to help you promote it. But I mean, did you always want to be a YouTube star? Uh, no, I didn't know what YouTube was. Oh, that's what I love. So you just do it for the love of it, not because you care about the number of people watching. <laughs> do you like making things? Um, sometimes. 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 When do you like making things? Uh, when I have nothing really else to do. Well, that's so what we're going to talk about. I, I mean, do you have an iPad or any digital things at home to play with? A computer. You've got a computer. And do you spend a lot of time on the computer or do you prefer making things and playing with tools? I read books and go on. Oh, you read. You see, now that is a dying art. A lot of people your age do not read books. They spend a lot of time playing uh, certain games uh, which have strange dance moves. I won't say which one. Um, they are... You know which one I'm talking about? I 
Her big brow. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, and I don't mean the flossing like this kind. And right. of course, uh, a lot of students, they just don't have the time to go out and make stuff. But I'll tell you what I like about your videos. Your dad lets you put tools in your hand. <laughs> and, and I see drills and I see saws. Uh, does he stand there hovering like a helicopter to make sure you don't chop your hands off? Or does he just say, go for it and be careful? Go for it and be careful. Oh, unless, I, unless, unless the tool's too big. If it's, if, it's a, if it's a big drop saw, I'm hovering. But okay. if it's just a drill, then she can go for it. Okay, and, I, and I've seen your videos. You're obviously quite comfortable putting the screws in and, and using this, the, the little jigsaw thing and, I mean, and obviously glue. And, and then you've got the mask for the spray painting. So you do a lot of making at home, which I think is fantastic. How much time do you spend making these things? Sometimes days, sometimes hours. Yeah. And so do you find that you – sorry? If it does project then um like the amphibious vehicle that probably took about all three days or something yeah. but if it was a little project like the turbo spoke on the bike maybe only two or three hours is that right mm -hmm. but you mickey loves going on the trampoline outside she loves playing with her little brother she loves mm -hmm. making things in the park she, she loves playing outside don't you Mick? is she a fan <laughs> of is she a fan of science? Hmm. I don't know. Are you a fan of science? Yeah. Well, the, I know what she's a fan of. The science of? Slime. 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 That seems she's to be the, very popular all over the world. And, and she's the queen of slime. Do you make Tell your Steve own slime? Your, Tell you, Steve, what your next video will be. A slime dispensing ingredient machine where you turn the car key in a hole and it um, dispenses um, like slime ingredients like borax and glue and shaving foam when you press it. No ways. Do you know how awesome no. that would be? I, I must just tell you that you could actually retire with that machine. You know why? Because if I go and ask the students in class, what is your favorite thing to play with? They all bring out slime with glitter, <laughs> slime that's luminous, slime that glows in the dark, slime that changes color when you hold it in your hands and your hands are warm. Slime that <laughs> is pink, slime that is silver, slime that is magnetic. I mean, you can't even stop to think of all the kinds of slime that is out there. And your machine, you turn the car key and slime just starts coming out. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and do people yeah, get to change? Can people choose what kind they want by turning a lever and then it mixes all the ingredients into one and then you get to play with it? Well, why do you have a key, Mickey? Why do you need the key? Then my brother can't play with it. It's so that she can put the key in. Now we get to the truth because, of course, we know what brothers do. They tend to not only play with the slime, <laughs> but they sneeze a few times and they add their own ingredients. And that's not a good thing to play with. That's right. Exactly. Now, she's not always an angel. She, um, when we caught her making slime using toothpaste in the microwave, that was a step too far. <laughs> now, how do you know when she's making slime in the microwave with toothpaste? Was, do you come to the microwave and go, that smells well, very fresh and minty. Absolutely. It was a burning <laughs> smell. <laughs> That is fantastic. And now, where does she get the ideas from? I don't know. Where, Mikhail, you where are you getting your ideas from? Must have been from YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. The, so, worst so how much... was, uh, the worst one was when she made slime from? Vapor rub. Vapor rub, which is like the petroleum jelly. Oh, I and know then... the vapor rub, the Vicks vapor rub. Oh, <laughs> my word. Uh, it was a disaster cleaning it up. <laughs> but you know what you need to do? Sometimes you need to experiment and find out the best way on how not to make slime. So oh. you know that old story about uh, Thomas Edison? No. He was the inventor of which amazing thing? What do you mean? Like the light bulb. And someone was interviewing him. They said, Mr. Edison, how do you feel about failing a thousand times when it came to making the light bulb? 
And he said, I did not fail a thousand times. I successfully found a thousand ways on how not to make a light bulb. <laughs> so, you know, you have to experiment. And that's what real science is. It is about actually making experiments and testing it out. And if things blow up, which I must yeah. just tell you, I'll tell you what I love about your videos. There was right. a, a wonderful video of you with uh, Michaela and she was on some sort of swing going around. Uh, and then I see like you bump into a tree. Now, <laughs> that to me means that you haven't sat down and thought, okay, we can't allow anyone to bump into the tree. We need to adjust to the court. You just let her go. She hits the wow. tree and you go, okay, maybe we need to make some changes. <laughs> that is the best way to do science. Of course, it's not when you're working with swords or, or, or and, fire, but, but definitely when you're swinging around a tree, that's absolutely awesome. Yeah. And, and I also noticed that you've got a lot of land at your place, yeah. a big yeah. garden. And, and Michaela, you have to drive your bin bike all the way up and down the driveway. I mean, it's obviously a big driveway to go and fetch the bins. How long is it, Nikki? How long is the driveway? 100, 200 meters. I mean, that's... that's so, so then you built a special little bin bike that you drive on. Uh, so look, we put the, we've got Sebastian there in India. We're just muting him quickly for a second. Sorry, Sebastian, we're muting you. Um, I think it's amazing that, you know, you saw a problem. The bin is very far away. I don't like walking up and down the driveway with the bin, and it's boring. I'm going to turn it into a bike. And that is an amazing thing. Are there yes. any other cool things that you've invented at your house that make life a little bit easier for you? So, for example, you go into the bathroom, you clap your hands, and the toilet seat goes down. That would be a good invention. You'd make a lot of money. What about going into the kitchen? And every time Dad opens the fridge, it says, can you please leave the ice cream alone? Mm-hmm. So what other things have you... <laughs> what have you made at home? <laughs> she's got a very good invention that she's just thought up. You tell Steve about the composting machine. Um, a composting um, hot water machine. And it's a hot water system that gets heated up by compost breaking down. And then it, um, the water rushes through the spiral pipe and surrounding the spiral pipe is compost. And then once it comes out of the top of the, um, um, like what's it called, container? The hot water system. Hot water system, you get a hot shower. Yeah. So that in Australia, I'm not sure about other countries, but our hot water systems are long cylindrical machines. Yep. And often they get a little tiny leak or something. And so uh, people put them on the side of the road for, for a garbage pickup. And so they're a waste product. There's often, we could go for a drive and always see one or two in our local area. Mm -hmm. And so Michaela's idea is to get one of those ones that's going to the dump, to the tip, putting a spiral copper tube in it, and then you put your food scraps in, and as the food scraps break down, they produce heat, and so you pump cold water in, and hot water comes out for a shower. So we sort of, we, we combined ideas and she came up with the hot, the hot water idea and um, we're, we're, we're going to be making it very soon. That is very exciting, but how hot would the water be? Oh, how hot? Um, I think I mean warm. Warm. Yeah. It'll be a warm so how, shower. Not so a hot shower. How, okay. So, so how would we uh, bump up the temperature of the heat uh, for the water? How could we, what's the way that we could do that? How could we heat it up? Hot coals? What, every morning hot coals? What's a better way of doing it? Do you think? More compost. More compost? What else? Uh, I don't know. You know, how do, we, how do we have a hot shower at the moment? Uh, salt power. What power? Solar power. Solar power. Solar or power. possibly, uh, what does the um, compost release? Oh, what gas? Yeah, yeah what gas does it give out, do you know? Uh, close, methane. And, so and burn, methane you could probably burn and then, then heat the water further. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. There's quite okay, a few so you, 
I'll give you my, my name. You can just put it on the patent at the bottom there just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that is just amazing. That Now, do you just come up with these ideas or does dad say to you, right, Michaela, you need an idea for this week? Think of one. What do we do? Um, sometimes I'll make the ideas, but if I don't have an idea, dad won't tell me, but he'll get the stuff and then I have to kind of guess what he's Ooh, so it's like a guessing game. So you'll say, oh, I have a pipe. I have a marshmallow. What do you think this would do? That's and then right. you'll say, I could shoot marshmallows at my brother Sam. <laughs> how do I get to build a machine to do that? And that's how that's it gets right. done. Is that right? Because although she's brilliant, she can't invent everything. And so I don't want to give her, I don't want to give her the idea, but I want to help her have the idea and okay. so i'll i'll put out things that will help build it and then she will sort of see the stuff and usually come up with the idea and even better come up with something a bit different and a bit better which i'm usually like whoa how did you think of that so at least she can then say well i invented it which is mm -hmm. she has to be honest of course well, you know what, as much as I would love to ask all the questions, I know that we've got an audience from all over the place. So, Tonya, is there anyone in your class that would like to ask Mickey or her dad a question about being an inventor? You just have to unmute yourself. And they're still a little bit quiet. Uh, they're coming, they're coming. Not, oh, there we go. So just click on the microphone to unmute, and then hopefully one of your students will have a question to ask, unless you're typing something in the chat. All right, and while you're doing that, we're going to ask maybe uh, Atalo in Brazil. Would you like to ask anything? Yeah. We, uh, Melissa is my student. She's, how old are you, Melissa? I'm 13 years old. 13 years old, and she has a question for Michaela. Hi. Um, how did you find out um, that you could invent things? That is a very good question. So, Michaela, do you hear the question? How did you find out that you were an inventor? When my dad did um, his episodes on his YouTube channel, Make Science Fun, I saw him kind of building little toys. Then uh, one day, like, I played one of them. And then he kind of asked if I wanted to make one. And then I started, with his help, starting to learn how to make, um, like, the amphibious vehicle and go-kart, and then I could start to do it more on my own. And what's been your favorite invention so far? The amphibious vehicle. So, oh no, the bathtub boat. The bathtub, the bathtub boat. boat looked awesome. But now of course the to build a bathtub boat, you need parts. Where are you sourcing all these parts from? Not everyone is leaving boats on the side of the road for the tip. I mean, you got to go and find these things. Yeah. Um, we have a junkyard with lots of um, old things, and we've got about four bus tubs. But where did they come from? Over Where from? Side of the road. The side of the road. So Are you telling people... me that everyone in your area puts everything out on the side of the road, and there's a junkyard, and you've got an entire workshop of resources round the corner. Absolutely, yes, it's exciting. We oh. go, for, uh, go for a drive out and then there's piles and so we can go, go hunting for uh, our raw materials. Baths, hot water systems, toys, bikes, barbecues, fridges, washing machines. That is so awesome. Um, Tanya says the hurricane has messed up our end. So does that mean you've got no sound? 
Um, you can just put a thumbs up or if you've got sound, you can, maybe you've got someone in your class that wants to ask a question. You must remember that in certain parts of America, they're going through awful, awful uh, hurricanes. We can see them clearly, but maybe they're going to type a question. Um, and she says, you must just keep inventing. And of course, we're going to follow you on YouTube, which is Thank so you. cool. <laughs> okay, so I don't think that their sound is working, but they can always type in a question in the chat and, and just mention the name. I see that Atalo has got another question that he wants to ask. So go for it, Atalo. Okay, next question would be? Um, how old were you when you started Vint Thinking? That is a very good question. How old were you? when we started inventing? Uh, nine. When I made a thumb sucking machine on my little, no, a stop rocking on your chair, which was a little, I put on my little brother's G rocked, the mercury would make an alarm go off. Now, I remember watching that one. That was so cool. And then I thought, are you going to give Mickey a, a bottle of like mercury you play with and then you pulled out a mercury switch yes i didn't even yes. know they existed yes yeah because mercury is uh one of the only two elements that is liquid at room temperature and mercury is a metal and so it conducts electricity and so in the switch the mercury rolls and it covers the contacts and it makes an electrical connection that caused the siren to go wee, 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 when he rocked on the chair. So, fact, so I want to know, you've got the chair. So let me ask you this. Did your brother stop sucking his thumb and did he stop rocking on his chair? Yes. He stopped. Well, then it was successful. That so was. now all you need to do is for people who wet their beds, You've just got to maybe have a little thing that puts 50,000 volts through them. And I guarantee you they'll never do it again. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That was your dad's idea. Well, I don't mind. That's a good idea, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, you, is something it's a conductor. It's a, good, it's a conductive liquid. Huh? Don't give her ideas, though, Steve. Uh, I, well, you know what? It's all about ideas. Uh, the other thing is now we've got Puneet and, and, and Shirley, and I think they are from India. Do either of you two want to ask a question? If you do, you can just unmute yourself and you can ask away. Some, ah, we've got Shirley. Yes, Shirley. Oh, it's not Shirley. It's Sebastian. Sebastian in India. Uh, yes, do you? I have Shirley. Okay, oh, okay. So normal school in India. Mm -hmm. She's a principal of a government school in India. Oh, okay. I am adopting that school and taking them to hyperspace. So you're going to have to say it again. You lost it for you. a second. I'll type it so for you. Oh, okay. So you'll just type in the chat because sometimes the, the connection in India isn't so strong and we sometimes lose a little bit of the conversation. But from what I can understand, Shirley is a principal at a school and uh, Sebastian is um, one of uh, my mentors and he's obviously encouraging the use of internet and uh, people connecting around the world um, to, to promote education and self-employment. And talking about self-employment, uh, in India, we work with a lovely organization who make toys from trash. Have mm. you ever seen the websites? I have. I have, yes. Ah, so, yes. so Arvind Gupta and, and uh, his colleagues, they do the most incredible stuff. And every single experiment, there is a YouTube video for it. So you can actually yes. make these things at home. And if you've got a junkyard next door, can you yes. imagine what you could do with all of that? Yes. It's one YouTube channel. It's fantastic. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, so Sebastian just explaining to Shirley how the whole thing works. So Shirley is a principal of a government school in a fisherman's hamlet, and he's adopting the school to update their tech life. So he's hoping to to get them involved with technology so that they can connect with uh, interviews like this 
and they can benefit from uh, learning from uh, scientists like Michaela and yeah. uh, her assistant, uh, Jacob. <laughs> yeah. we, we, you know, that's how it's going to be. You do realize <laughs> that Mickey's channel is going to just blow up and have a million, million, zillion viewers, and your wow. dad is going to be your assistant. You'll be like, oh. um, could you please go fetch me your pliers and a hacksaw? You reckon that's how it's going to be? <laughs> oh. one, day, one day, one day. So you obviously made this uh, amphibious vehicle. It's a little ride-on. Did you go find the ride-on in the junkyard? Did you get the ride-on from the junk car? Yes. Absolutely. The toy car. Who oh, is toy throwing car. all these things away? Well, if something, if the battery doesn't work, they think, oh, we won't get a new battery. We'll just throw it away. And then people like us go and find it, put a new battery in, give it a new life, give it a new role. Huh? How often do you go to the junkyard? Um, usually when we're just driving to school or we're driving to places, we might notice something standing out in a junk pile and we might, on the way home, go, um, Look at, look at it. So you're not actually going physically to the junkyard itself. You're just driving along and, and everyone, like all your neighbors, just keep throwing out stuff. Do you ever find kids on the side of the road? No? <laughs> no. <laughs> so we, we collect the stuff and then the junkyard is at our place. That's where we store it. So the junkyard oh. that she's <laughs> is the junkyard that my Man. wife really <laughs> But you've got Does lots your of mum space. The junkyard? Yes. You've got lots of but space. And I noticed that you're... Stage, yeah? At one stage, I had 10 ton of scrap metal in my junkyard, which was... So no, was you did junk. not. Oh, I did, because I used to also collect scrap metal and take that to the scrap metal recycler as well. So. And I mean, <laughs> how are you transporting all this stuff? How did we used to do it? In the back of Dad's truck, like truck. I had a Ute. I had a, a Ute. Um, uh -huh. I have only a car now, so now we have to uh, throw the stuff in the back of the car. But I used to actually have a Ute that we used to drive around in. And then, of course, a trailer. If you just put everything in a trailer, then that that really helps a lot. Um, Who think we go get the trailer? That's right. Now, you guys made an amazing video of a solar-powered catamaran. Uh, did you build the frame that you connected the two boats with? Uh, or was that a frame that existed? Someone threw it out because they didn't need a catamaran frame. Uh, <laughs> how, how did that come together? It was, I think we found it in our shed. No, it was um, for many years ago. There used to be a solar-powered um, boat race um, in Canberra, which is Australia's capital city. Mm -hmm. And... There was quite a lot of schools involved and um, large industry involved. And so there was lots of boats made. But then um, the race stopped. And so some people were getting rid of their boats. And I put my hand up and said, I'll come and pick up the boat. And that was a frame of one of the old boats. In fact, the catamaran that we built, that was actually just the outriggers for a really big solar-powered catamaran. But wow. we... I was a trimaran, a trimaran, because um, it's very, very quiet, doesn't use petrol, uh, it uses the sun, you never run out of fuel, and there's nothing like purring along the water uh, without any, making any noise. It's fantastic. But you've obviously got a motor that you've connected, a little outboard motor that you put underneath the boat, and then that connects to the solar panel, which connects yeah. to a battery, so that the, it's powering the battery, which then yeah. powers the... And, I mean, that can go on and on and on until That's it right. becomes overcast and you're stuck in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> well, it's funny that during the race, people used to get stuck under the bridge because <laughs> the bridge used to... <laughs> so then how do you solve that problem? You get a torch and shine uh, it lots, on... The... Lots of momentum or a quick paddle. <laughs> <laughs> So that is so cool that you get to actually, and, and I noticed that you're obviously quite close to the seaside because you get yes. to uh, go and test some of the things on the water there. It's not like it's in your garden. 
No. Although we have had a we have had a big dam in our pond that we but it's it struck a leak and so we used to put the boats and things in our dam but it doesn't hold much water at the moment, does it, Mickey? No. That Tell is so the cool. project that we're working on at the moment. What's the project to do with water? We just told you about that. No, nah, the other one, the boat. Oh, the other one. The boat we're making. Thunderbird rescue. Oh yeah, the thunder. We're, oh yeah, the Thunderbird rescue boat we're making. That's the right. Thunderbird rescue. That sounds yeah. like a whole movie on its own. What is that about? Um, this guy, like you know, those fun aqua toy to play with. Those like uh -huh. paddle boards or yep. those um boat things where you pedal. Yep, the paddle. The yeah, paddle boat. This guy chopped out a big um pedal boat but it had no pedals it was just a bigger plastic canoe handlebar seat thing so dad took it and we're gonna put a big outboard motor on and we're gonna make it like a big um jet ski thing yeah but then Whoa. we're going to the trailer like the green capsule from thunderbirds and then we'll drive up to the lake and we'll pretend her brother's drowning and then she'll come Riding out of the trailer on her jet ski electric boat and go rescue her brother. So it will be like Thunderbirds, I go and then she goes. So cool. But now she doesn't know about Thunderbirds, does she? Not really. Not like you and me. <laughs> so, so she's being reintroduced to a timeless classic. That's right. You know a bit about the Thunderbirds, don't you? I've seen Thunderbirds. She seems she has seen. Oh, some. she has seen a little bit. But not the uh, original puppet type yeah. that. You've seen the original puppet type? A long time ago. A long time ago. Oh, what yeah. was you? Are, are we aging ourselves here when we speak about this stuff? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is so funny. What is the project we're working on? I don't know. You don't know? What's down there? I don't know. What's down there in your playground on the grass? Oh, that one. I, I oh, is that one? So, you see, she is a real inventor because she can't remember all the inventions that she's made. Oh, no, this one's my project. So what's the project? <laughs> what's the project? A Viking ship. It's a solar-powered Viking ship. No ways. How yeah. big is the ship going to be? Um, is it five metres? It's eight metres long. Oh, get out of here. That's too big. How do you even no. transport it? It's got. It's on a trailer. It's a, We bought it off Gumtree, which is a... Uh -huh. We've got gum tree as well. Gum tree, mm -hmm. that gum tree is a fan. Oh, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, and, and it's a it's an rescue life lifeboat. It's a timber fiberglass, and in the old days, Australia, a it's, it's a rowboat that goes in the okay. ocean. It looks almost identical to a Viking ship, and so we're going to put uh, paint it so it looks like it's made out of timber, and we're going to put. The shields, what are the shields going to be, Mickey? Um, the Viking shields. Yeah, the Viking shields, but in the middle of the Viking shields are going to be solar panels. That is so. What about and solar so panels? The, the shields. The captain. Is the captain not going to have solar horns? Well, I think we're actually going to. We need a sail. Yeah, well, uh -huh. <laughs> we actually sold the oars. <laughs> so we bought the, the boat and sold the oars. <laughs> That sounds pretty useful. But now, what would happen if you put wheels on the bottom of the boat so you could drive it to oh. the lake and drive <laughs> into the lake and then drive back out again? Well, you're it's an amphibious There we go. I mean, I was just thinking, do you know anyone who's made any amphibious uh, craft recently? No. 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 Yes. <laughs> You see, mm. so you should use all the ideas that you've already put together in your ride on that you went driving around in the water with and maybe put that to the boat and you could have a really cool amphibious Viking boat with wow. solar powered horns. I'm <laughs> telling you, the solar powered horns are going to make us a lot of money. And I say us because we're, we're part of the same team here. That is You're so right. cool. I, I'm the ideas guy. <laughs> you, let me ask you this, McKenna, and I want the truth now. Don't let your dad answer for you. Your dad is obviously very good with tools. Do you have light switches 
and things around the house that have not been fixed because he's so busy working on all the other stuff in the garage? Um, a tile outside my front bedroom, all the full of bugs, and the um, kitchen's breaking. <laughs> so, so he's very good at everything else except for the stuff at home. Yes. That is not surprising at all. And let me guess, when you ask him to fix it, he goes, I've got it under control. I'm going to do it as soon as I finish the other project, which is going to take nine months. Yeah. But where did the house come from? Uh, Dad. Dad made the house. I no, he did house. not. You built the house yourself. The house. Yeah. No. H how big is the house? It's a big house. It's like a very big house. Ten bedrooms. It's very big. It's and you pulled the entire bedrooms. thing yourself. Yeah. Well, that's down the house. It's a long house. It's a high house. And how many, how long did it take you to build the house? It took two years after school. We, we used to work on it after school. And then my brother and my father um, built it with me on, my father helped on Friday and Saturday and my brother helped on Saturday. And so it took two years. But that every afternoon from four o'clock to 11 o'clock and then all the school holidays. So it was two, two, two years of very hard work. But it's a, it's a beautiful, it's a solar, solar house. So there's a lot of features um, that incorporate uh, solar electricity and solar heating and cooling and that sort of thing. So let's talk about that. So you've turned your house into an actual project itself. You've got solar heating. You've got yes. solar energy so that you don't run on electricity. Are you off the grid? We're not off the grid, but we've got a big solar system. Uh, water? Are you off the grid? Solar because holiday. you guys are also going through some major water problems like we are. Or not, not nearly as bad as you, but um. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do some. Well, actually, we we were now up to about, um, I think seventy percent uh, for the dams. They're now full seventy percent, so we, we're back to being okay again. But oh, there was a time cool. where we thought we would sit there and and maybe each person gets a bottle of water like this for a day to just use for showering and drinking, yeah. and that's not a great yeah. way to live. You're in our news and in our prayers as well. We were, we were, we were worried about you. No, you were just wondering if your cricket team or your rugby team were going to beat ours. That's what you were wondering. No, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, what I'm keen to know is obviously, Mix, you are in grade. You what's it? Year six. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, are you in high? Is it like a middle school, high school, or still in in primary school? Primary. You're going to be going up to high school and you're going to have to choose subjects. What subjects are you planning to choose? Cooking. Sport. Choose all of our subjects. What subjects do you do? Um, what do you do? Geography, English, math, science. And you reckon you'll be taking the science and the math up to year 12? Um, no, not the math. Not what? the math? Are you kidding me? Uh, let me just hold it. I'm going to get it to change her mind. Let me see if I've got it over here with me. I might have it in my pocket. Okay, do you know what this is? Ooh. A receipt. It's a receipt and it's got a tracking number on it. Do you know what that means? Um, worth a lot of money? No, it means that a parcel is on its way to your house. Ooh. Ooh. And in it, there is a surprise. Would you like to know what the surprise is? Uh, Max. <laughs> no. You want to know? Okay. <laughs> I can't tell you it's a surprise because if I told you, it would be a surprise. <laughs> but I can tell you this, that your dad will be aware when it arrives. 
So now I'm going to ask you that question again. Mickey, do you love maths? Um, no. <laughs> so, You're Dad, nice. when she changes her mind, then you are allowed to hand the package over. Okay. But for we'll now, you're going to have to keep it. So, Mitch, well, do you like maths? <laughs> I don't love worry. maths. Did, well, what did you that. say? I love maths. <laughs> Make sure she gets the parcel as soon as it arrives. Oh, this is that very is fantastic. Adaptable. Uh, <laughs> you, you know what? I think it's only fair that uh, it came from herself. It wasn't like we made her say it. She thought about that herself, and, and we appreciate your honesty, and, and that is why you have earned that particular surprise <laughs> that will be arriving. What I can say is that the South African Postal Service is probably not as efficient as the Australian one, right. so it might take a little bit longer to get there, but every maybe. day you can go and check the box to see when it's coming. And maybe Christmas time. Uh, it'll get there before then, I'm sure. I'm oh, sure. <laughs> so now... Um, the other thing I want to know is that, you know, when, when you were interviewed on TV on, on Little Big Shots, uh, mm. I must just tell you, out of all the episodes of Little Big Shots that I've seen, I enjoyed yours the most. <laughs> and you know why? Yeah. I loved the way you put together that lovely helmet for Shane and you got him to vacuum his beard with a disgusting filthy vacuum cleaner that you found on the road and you only told him afterwards that was a win big big win for me and then you got that thing to sit there and whacking his face the beard groomer that was just fantastic so did you come up with that before or during the show or how did that work did they say to you listen you're going to be on the show can you invent something for shame they said that they wanted um they said they need some ideas, so I decided, like, maybe... Oh, okay, get it. You, you answer. Maybe three inventions for Shane. So, yeah, just to look good, I made one for his head, which was the big groomer. One uh -huh. for his body, the body cooler, and yep. his, feet, his feet were the um, mass spelling feet. And did he really spray that liquid in his boots? Yes. But and was what was in that liquid? Poison. Poison? What? No. Tell us some of the ingredients that you added into that poison. Uh, whatever I got was into food dye. So you just went around the house and thought, I'll take a little bit of this, I'll take a little bit of that. What is... Oh, so I'll just add that. And then you just put that into a syringe so that he could spray that into his shoes. Yes. I just put some food coloring in with water. <laughs> and then, of course, you've got the fan. And he thought the fan would blow the stinky fumes towards him. But what he meant to say is that it would blow the nice smelling fumes. Is that correct? Yes. And then, of course, the straws are there to let the air out of the shoes so the bad odor comes out. Is that correct? That's right. How did you know the boots would fit him? Um, we didn't. So they only just fit him. We had to get the biggest size of gum boots because he's got big wow. feet. Yeah. And you were but lucky that it actually did fit. <laughs> and this was the helmet. This was the big groomed helmet. So you got the vacuum cleaner part and then... Uh, who put the eyes on the helmet? What did the mirrors do? The mirrors were to see where you could go. Yes. And it was to whack in the face. And where did this uh -huh. come from? This came from a little Elmo toy from Sesame Street. This was Tickle Me Elmo. Tickle Me Elmo. That was down on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah. And, on the and then this is a vacuum cleaner from the side of the road. <laughs> And he was wiping that all over his face with no problem. And then he asked, so where did you get it from? And you did this dramatic pause. And then you said, on the side of the road. And it was like, <laughs> bam, drop the mic. He was like, ah, I'll just wipe this all over my face. And uh, it wasn't on TV, but then what did you say to him, Mickey? I asked if he was allergic to cats and he said he was allergic to cats. <laughs> 
So does that mean that thing was used to, to clean up cat fur? Well, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> that is so cool. So now, obviously, you, you, you've got your new YouTube channel called Invent with Mickey, and you are going to try and do an invention every week. Is that correct? Oh, hold on. Every two weeks. And are you sitting down and, and like making up a whole list of ideas for things that you're going to invent? Or does it just come to you that week and you think, okay, this week we're going to be building or something that just came to my mind? I've got a list, but I don't have an order. And it depends what I want to go first. So I really want a pet bunny rabbit. So my next video is going to be a pet bunny rabbit. And I'm going to make a cage, like a two-story hotel cage for my bunny rabbit. And I'm going to go buy a bunny rabbit. Does your dad know about this plan? Yes. But I... you know the bad part? He, I have, I have to pay with my money for the bunny rabbit. I have to pay for the bunny rabbit food. I have to pay for the bunny rabbit hay. I have to pay for the bunny rabbit pet expenses. I have to pay for everything for the bunny rabbit. And who's going to clean up the bunny rabbit poo? Me. So what you know what? The robot that you might make that cleans up the poo. The no? robot with a little um, <laughs> little. Can you imagine? Brush. It's like a little brush. It, in fact, what you could do is you could have like a tray on top of the. Uh, let's say it's it's like a bunch of holes that are unaligned, and when you push the button, they all align, Ooh. and then all the poop drops down into the tray below. And then it moves across again so that the rabbit can still walk on it without falling through the holes. And you just take the tray underneath. How's yeah, that? Yeah. But you know what? Third idea today. Every superhero needs sidekicks. And, and I think you're the superhero and we'll be your sidekicks and we'll help you with ideas. Look at that. Do that again. I've got to get a photo. Show me your super. Oh, that is awesome. Awesome. So now... You, you're planning to get a rabbit, and your dad is thinking, I don't want her to get a rabbit. So how am I going to discourage her? Oh, you're going to pay for the rabbit yourself. You're going to look after the rabbit yourself. And then you start thinking, you know, maybe a rabbit's not such a good idea anymore. That's not well, a bad idea, Dad. <laughs> you can where you got some money from this week. Uh, some of my videos, like the bike thing with the little piece of plastic in the plastic water bottle attached to the bike. Uh -huh. um, the company bought that video for like $300. So I get half the money. So that's going to um, pay for my bunny rabbit stuff. And then another video sold for some How expensive money. are bunny rabbits in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you can get them for free. <laughs> you can on Gumtree. You can. Uh, on Gumtree, they, people actually will give you the rabbit and the cage and everything, saying, please do us a favor, take it from us. Some people sell them for $200. Oh, but <laughs> those, are the, those are the rabbits that wear a diamond collar. <laughs> I think that's why they cost so much. <laughs> that is just insane. So you, you know what I think is quite exciting? That it's not just the science that you are experimenting with. If, if I had to ask you in general, do you like science? You'd probably say, I don't know, I'm not a big fan. If I said to you, do you like math? And you'd say, no, nah, I'm not a big fan. But actually, I see you measuring things out when you are busy doing your designs. I see you going, let's try this. No, that's probably not going to work. Let's try it the other way around. So what you are actually doing is mathematics. And what I want to say is that when I go to schools and I do assemblies, I always ask, who does not like mathematics? And many kids put up their hands. And then I ask them, who likes music? And they all put up their hands. And then I say, you're a hypocrite. <laughs> you know what a hypocrite is? Yes. A hypocrite is someone who says something but does the complete opposite. And I'll tell you why. Because if you say you like music, does that mean you like classical music? No. Do you like... Opera music. No. No. But you still like music. 
So just because you don't like doing lots of sums doesn't mean you don't like mathematics. You just don't like that part of mathematics. But you obviously love the parts of mathematics where you have to use that to design and build things. So stick with that part of mathematics because that's going to earn you the big bucks. <laughs> and get the big bang. The big bang. <laughs> so, so if you're to think now, you're only 11, where do you think your inventing is going to go? Uh, I mean, where would you like to take your inventions? Maybe to 16. And then and after what, that? What would you like to do? What's, what, what's a goal that you've got? Where would you like to go with your inventions? Um, um, you know where you want to go. Um, Disneyland. Have you ever been to Disneyland before? No. 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 So then I think, but you know, I can tell you now, Atalo is in Brazil, and he brought a whole bunch of students to come and learn English in Cape Town. And they had, oh, he's even wearing the Living Maths T-shirt. Look at that. It says <laughs> math astronaut in training. I love it. Let's get a photograph <laughs> of that one. Awesome. So he brought a bunch of students to Cape Town and he thought, well, if you're going to learn English, the best way to do it is to do it while traveling. And then you yes. don't sit in the classroom. You get to interact and speak with the people. And I think that maybe you guys should come and visit South Africa, A, huh? because it really is pretty similar to, to uh, Sydney and, and places like that. But B, your currency is so strong compared to our rand that you would be like, I mean, your little payment for your video, you could literally walk around like the queen and buy whatever you wanted for that kind of money. <laughs> so you're going to have to think about that. It's not Disneyland, but it's also got lots of beaches and, and all the beauty that you guys are probably used to in, back in Oz. So, so yeah. I did notice that in one of the videos, you said that you wanted to become a clown. Do, is that something you really, really want to do, or are you just giving him a silly answer? Um, it was really late, and it's really late now. So I'm really tired now, and I was really tired on the night of Little Big Shots because it was like 10 o'clock then. Oh, boy, so, yeah. But would you really want to be a clown? No. No? Because I was just telling your dad that I've connected him up with uh, a friend of mine who's also based in Oz. And he is what I would call a science clown. He does these cool science shows. And you would think that he was a clown because he shoots marshmallows from his cannons and stuff like that, which I think would actually go quite well with the kind of stuff that you would do. But you obviously, you want to do inventing. And then do you want to just stop that and then do something else? What do you want to do? I don't know. She doesn't know. <laughs> she she I mean, she yeah. looks exhausted. She looks like she's, you know what you should do? You should actually paint your eyes on the outside of your eyelids. And then you close your eyes and then they look like they open all the time. And then your dad would have a little stick behind you that moves your head up and down. And then you would be like, yes, yeah. And I'd be like, she is so responsive. It's yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> and that's why she knows about this, because if you were her science teacher, you would see right through it. But her actual that's science so right. teacher wouldn't. Four inventions, four for four. <laughs> that would be so cool. So in parting, because I know that uh, it is late for you. It's like 11, almost 11 o'clock at night. And, oh, wow. and that's like... Way you obviously go to bed way past bedtime. I'm talking to your dad. It's obviously way past his bedtime. You, on the other hand, can handle it. But your dad is looking like I'm a cure for insomnia. But anyway, let me ask you this. Two things. I want to ask Michaela the first question. What advice would you give people your age if they wanted to become inventors? And think about all the things that have gone wrong and how difficult it is. It's not an easy thing to do, but what advice would you give them about becoming an inventor? Not give up. Not give up. Are there many times that you want to give up? Yeah. And then, of course, you have your sidekick 
who comes and says, uh, Your Highness, um, perhaps maybe giving up is not a good idea. Maybe I could suggest a new spanner. Is that how he does it? No. He says, we have to do it again because we have to finish the video. <laughs> oh, I love it. So he does it in a slightly more um, subtle way. Time is funny. The clock is ticking. <laughs> oh, boy. You see, we never see this behind the scenes on the video. And then, Dad, what advice would you give? people who want to become inventors because obviously you're a mentor and you yeah. give these kinds of, uh, you give uh, Michaela and, and, and Sam lots of suggestions on how to make things. So what advice yeah. would you give them? Just start building something. Just try anything. Just, just start. Doesn't matter how simple. <laughs> I'm just loving this. Uh, and the more you do, the more creative you become. It's incredible how creative. Once you, like yourself, you've obviously, you have a lot of ideas. The, the, once you start having ideas, you get more ideas. That's what, Just start doing it. Do you want me to, do you want me to talk like this? <laughs> and now. Oh, okay. This I am Stop. loving. So does she ever do a Jacob impersonation? Only when she's very, very tired. Uh, only when she's very tired. <laughs> because, because she loves that. She, she wants to be just like her dad. That's why. She just wants to be just like her dad. So, I mean, I, I will say this. Obviously, as a parent myself and, and as a teacher, you know, we always ask people, you know, who inspired you to do what you are doing? Who got you excited about all those things? And, and I would probably think, that because she's seen some of your YouTube videos and because she sees you launching the neighbor's cat over the fence. No, I'm joking. You didn't do that. But I mean, because she sees you doing all these crazy things and you throw the best birthday parties oh. ever. I've seen that video and I could just yeah, imagine how cool that birthday party must have been. Everyone who came to the party were like, you know, you've got the best dad ever. And you're like, oh, come on. He didn't even fix my light switch outside my room. And I've got bugs flying in my hair. Is, is that, how, does it, how does it feel to know that everyone looks up to your dad and goes, that was just like the best party ever? I'll, I'll close my ears while you say it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what to say. Are you don't have to say. That's a good party? She's proud of her daddy. Do you ever get to an age where it's not cool to have dad do the party anymore? And now when your friends come over and your dad goes, oh, I've got a cool game. We're going to play pin the tail. And you're like, Shh, no, no, dad. It's okay. We're going to have a party without you, thank you. And your dad comes in with a helmet and I think, oh, look, we can make these. And you're like, no, dad, we're making candles. Please leave. We're making candles and no glue guns. Get away with your glue gun. Do you think it's going to reach a point where you get to that age and dad is not as cool as he used to be? No. Do you know why? Because, because dad's her, doing all the parties. Because her 18-year-old brother had a party last year and he asked, he said, Dad, can you do some science games at my party? No, he did not. He did. He did. And so that is I made just... a, a skill tester. It was a, do you know the skill tester where you have to follow a yep, couple of things? Yep, the wire. Absolutely. It makes a yeah. buzz sound. Yeah, but yeah, it was outside. You had to take your shoes off. A giant one. And you had to stand on some chicken wire. And it was connected to a, an electric fence unit. And then there was $100 at the end. And you had to go. And if you touched it, it almost felt like you had a heart attack. Boom. <laughs> now, you see, this to me is phenomenal because if you go into america or brazil or any other maybe not brazil but other countries if you told people that you had a device that would shock the living daylights out of anyone who tried it they would probably think that we should arrest you straight away in south africa and australia you can get away with that kind of stuff that is so cool I had to put a hundred dollars at the end to give them the, the, the incentive to do it because it hurt so much they didn't want to do it. <laughs> and how many of them did it? Uh, the first person got a hundred dollars and then um, 
I started filming a bit poor, so I put fifty dollars, and then someone got fifty dollars, and then I put twenty dollars. So the part cost. Okay, I'll tell you what the problem is. Then Dad earned more money when he sold the video. Yeah, thankfully someone oh, you bought sold the video. The video of that. I haven't even seen it. You know what I think you should have done? I think you should what? have got like some sort of massager and put it into yeah. the handle with a remote control. So while they're right. obviously moving, you push the button and it starts shaking and there's no way they're going to get there. You're going to score money every time. <laughs> the funny thing was that the closer, they got, the closer they got to the money, the more nervous they got. So I didn't need them. This time. <laughs> well, oh, you know what you could have done? You could have put on the board just behind it little jets of air. So while they are going, you pump random bits of air in their face and they get so distracted that eventually they, t I'm telling you now, we can make a lot of money together. <laughs> number five. <laughs> number five. <laughs> that was, I think I was on number six. I, I'm, I'm on number 10. You, you came late, Michaela. You were fast asleep while I was talking to your dad. We were just throwing out ideas. I'm like a, a one-stop invention shop. So here's the thing. <laughs> I do want to say thank you very much to both of you. I know that Michaela had to give up a portion of her beauty sleep to be here, which uh, is a tremendous sacrifice. But fortunately, she's got the looks to keep it. So she didn't need as much beauty sleep. Her dad, unfortunately, on the other, on the other hand, he's going to have to invent something to groom the rest of his face. Maybe like a little panel beater hat or something like that. But it is so cool that you guys managed to meet with us. And I know this won't be the last time because. Uh, when we start promoting your uh, inventions with Mickey and obviously make science fun, we're going to try and, and connect you with all the right people so that your videos go viral, you make lots of money, and then you come visit us in South Africa. That would be pretty cool. It's a deal. Deal. <laughs> you all heard it on the video. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the broadcast here. Thank you to all those who are watching live, and thank you to those who joined us live in the interview as well. And what I do.